All right. Three, two, one. Just die already, nigger. Whatever. Everybody gets what they want in the end, right? The Civil War. So you're saying the Civil War was whites against blacks. Okay, so, from what I'm understanding, there was a division. Somebody was already here, somebody was coming. Now, let's look at that division. Let's, let's, let's make a tangible object. Let's fold it in half, and let's set it aside. Now we know somebody was here, Somebody came. Let's put that aside for one second. When we go to Medicine Man's video, where he talks about that city in Central America, and he goes to this book, right? The it's the Chronicles of uh, Peru uh, falling, right? That's, that's basically what it is, right? Uh, and he brings that book up, but he goes into uh another book talking about invasion of the mongols during the 12 and 1300s that's key again because this is going to go onto the video series that's out there on netflix about marco polo marco polo is minute in that story. The story is really about Genghis Khan, who has already passed away, and his power, the vacuum, has been seized by his grandson. I think it's his grandson, right? Yeah, my grandfather, right? And he keeps always saying that the, the sky opened up and talked to his dad and gave him a mandate. You understand what a mandate is? You need to understand what a mandate is. Because these are the words that are being used. Now, it doesn't matter what word he used in his tongue at the time that he made these things. What matters is how his brother, the white man, translates it. Now, when you have a Mongol invasion all over the world, Magog, Mongol, whatever, the Bible call it one thing, they call themselves something else. When you have the Mongolians seizing China, first the north, then the east, then the west, then the south. Marco Polo season two is all about the south falling. Once the south falls, there's no more China. It is then a Mongol-Chinese mixture. The Chinese originally were dark. Those people are not there anymore. Some have been effed through. The rest have been pushed out. <sighs> Diaspora. Same thing that happened to you and me. But the problem is, is when me and you were diasporaed from that area, it was by those dark-skinned Chinese and light-skinned Chinese. But the real, real people now it was their turn they were overthrown by the mongols okay sorry about that we had to take a little break um the campaigns of genghis khan and uh, excuse me to genghis khan and his grandson all right and again whoever continues his bloodline and genghis khan does uh, what rapes all the women and says your children will have my face now we've heard this throughout history we've seen this throughout history and it seems that some people might find that offensive but this is historically what's happened so look at who has his face and look at who, who doesn't have his face on top of that 
once you have a campaign like that that's successful, what is going to stop you from spreading? Now, when you look at the Asiatic people or the people that are labeled Asiatic, the Chinese, the Japanese, even the Mongolian, again, if the Mongolians from Japheth, then why the Chinese and Japanese look just like the Mongolian? It's going to, you know, they're, 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 they're not the same bloodline, you know, but today they're the same. But they're telling us that they're different. They're using the different names. So they're committing uh, an identity fraud. You go to the encyclopedias, it says this dynasty, that dynasty, and this dynasty that used to be in China is now gone. So let's move away from there. Let's move over here and view the United States. Now, when we view the United States, <coughs> we get right back to this, the two sides, right? Now, right before we get into those two sides, there's a pre-war because from the 12 and 1300s, we have all these Magog, Mongol people that come to the Americas. This is the first wave or the most sex, uh, excuse me, successful campaign of the Scavians, the Scythians, the nomadic horseback riders that are Japheth's children. Now of that group, the Magogians go first. This is what you call your American Indian. Now again, when the American Indian gets here, there's somebody already on the land. And you can tell from the book, Mystery of the Mexican Pyramids and things, they're telling you in these books that the indigenous people sacrificed flowers until they had land disputes. When you have the Mongols coming in, the Magogians, Magogites coming in, and you say, okay, you can settle, and then they start breaking laws, then some kind of judgment has to go into place for these laws being broken, depending on how, uh, depending on the violation of the law. Again, if, if, if you're not cutting hands off for theft, you're cutting hands off for something. If these things are not happening in the 1100s, and they're happening in the 12 and 1300s, it's because the Magogites come. So, when you start to create jails, you've been... You've, someone has come to your land, asked for a piece of land. You've said, yeah, but you said, these are the rules. Once they start breaking these rules, you're going to create jail. As you start to imprison these people, and a greater percentage of people, a greater percentage of American Indians come under your custody, then a problem persists. Now, if you invite 300 onto the land and you've put in prison 150, you can already see that there's, there's a problem. How long will it be till the other 150 go? So when you say to them, it's no longer viable for you to be here, wherever you came from you'd be better off there because here you just break our law so we imprison you we don't want to spend our lives guarding you so we just want you to go somewhere else now from the things i've read this is what's going on that is when their other brothers come 
up in the north, you got the same thing going on. The Megogites came over. They get to a certain point. The Megogites did not come by boat. There's, there's nobody with any kind of recording that they came by boat. With the evidence of the Eskimo, they, they came by foot, and some of them didn't want to make it. You know, we didn't want to go any further. And come down through the north, what we call Canada, and these are where the wars started. Now, eventually, the British come from what we call the east, or what they call the east, and eventually their brothers, the Spaniards, come from the south. Now, Central America, South America, have records of the Native Americans coming by boat and by canoe. But they ain't come by massive ship. And canoe is what I mean by boat. Now, we dealt with carving whole trees into boats. That is the kind of canoes that we made at the same time. So, while in the mystery of the Mexican pyramids, our people are classified as the Lost Ten Tribes, living on top of what the Toltec built, being called the Aztec. Now, what's going on is you have all these Japhetites coming to dwell in the tents of Shem. So when I say the Civil War, it's one side black, one side white. It's almost that way. Because on each side, you have people how do you say this? That want to be on the other side. So, it's more like this, right? So, you have a home indigenous people, and you have an away team. It's coming. Some of those indigenous people want to be on the side of the away team. Some of those away team want to be on the side of the indigenous people. Now you've got a cluster. How can I prove any of this? Well, again, if the white people that come here is a horse and buggy culture, how is anything built? They didn't know how to work the material. They didn't know how to build on a grand scheme. A grand scale. Log cabins. A lot of cabins prove that you can't even make planks. I mean, doesn't that really solidify everything? You know, you got to be taught how to work the wood. Not just chop a tree down and just, you know, leave it and just add another damn tree. That leaves a giant in gap, right? <laughs> so when you start putting two and two together... Right, because they, they they've altered history. They don't they don't want us to understand. Right, and don't forget, Lincoln frees the slaves. Right, Lincoln's in Illinois, but he frees the slaves in the thirteen colonies. At the same time, you got indigenous colleges already built. You got black colleges. 
you tell you telling me that 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 white supremacist created black colleges I'm not buying that shit no no because when you go to these colleges they had the real history hidden somewhere in the library and you know what Chris Rock said Boy, that was hot, hot, hot. <sighs> so, how can I prove any of this? Hmm. Let me show you something I stumbled upon. Now, I had been looking, and I was in the America is Rome category now you know me and the america is rome category now so much so that you should be seeing my stuff right here but you don't because my stuff's a little too forward so let's read a little bit of this here alexander snyder xander so xanax right comparisons between rome and right exhibit ancient rome and america now how could they have an, an exhibit this is almost 10 years old right all right ancient roman slavery versus or and right and american slavery right parallels between america and rome's demise oh yeah right because we're going downhill uh, what we've been telling you you see them on the streets on the expressways right you get off at any exit there's a white dude there. Hey, help me out. Motherfucker, you stole everything. What do you need help with? Is America falling like Rome? Now look at this. What if Rome colonized America? Ain't that something? That's, that is damn near the root of what we've been preaching the whole time. Okay. And then behind Rome, where did the armies go? Because when Rome left Rome, which was Europe, all those European countries was colonized by the what? The barbarian. Then the barbarian put on the I am these people. Hmm? Put them on like a fucking garment. Doesn't the Bible say Nebuchadnezzar's people isn't the Nebuchadnezzar from Japheth? Wear you like a garment. Tartan. Right? So, let's look a little bit further. America is Rome, 1800. Oh, so if I add that, see the difference? That's all I did was add that, right? Now, all of a sudden, flat earth nation, de ara platerita comes up, right? And then non temple more, right? These two guys, right? Here's this one. See, look at all this. If I take Rome is America Tartarian, so I want a specific video. That's why I put it. In. I want this one right here. All right. So this is not the one I want, but we're gonna go further. When and how mud flood Armageddon, Armageddon on domed flat Earth. This is what I actually want. Now, of course, we have to type in F U, I'm sorry, F A R. I'm going to leave the I out. E U S. That's Dixie. Fair use. So we're going to bust some fair use. Fair use. We're going to use the material to report 
and to teach. Fair use. Okay. One more time. Fair use. Fair use. Fair use. Fair use. Yeah, fair use. When and how mud flood, right? So let's listen. Listen very close. So. And it'll start to scab over. That, that's what happens with the rocks. Uh, but it's, it's the Lord's timing is the Lord's timing. So I've got a few clips pulled up. I want to run for you guys. And uh, maybe I'll close out with some comments later. But we covered a lot of ground. And if this channel ever goes away, don't wait for something new every day. The things I've said over the last two and a half years, you can be able to see to where we can, we understand, you know, the mud flood, the Armageddon, how we will be judged by the stones. All of those things are important. So in between, I want to show you that once you learn and you start tracking history. Yep. Let's give it a second. We're going to go to 556. Refresh. Oxide in a wound, it'll... Hold on for a second. Yeah, every time we start recording, all this stuff just shuts down. This is what the updates are always about. Stopping you from, what, correlating your work. In history, you'll be able to understand everything. This is an old video about general now this is the key and of course we get closer to it it just keeps it just keeps acting up now here's this old video all right uh sound like mega something megabytes or something i don't know but remember i found the, the confederate lost gold now again White men getting off the boat. Been in the 13 colonies. Been having lots of problems in Florida. Got problems with Spanish in Florida. Spanish got problems in Florida. Spanish leave Florida. What they're leaving out is the problem that the British and the Spanish are having. This is, you got to find, you got to realize that's a huge fucking problem. All right. The Spanish come, they invade, they're taking gold, and their ships are sinking on the coast. Who's taking down their ships? The British come, the British are seizing land, but they can only get to the to the 13 colonies. Who's keeping the British from, from going further into the north or south? A Haitian man comes up, right, from Haiti. Dressed just like the Roman general, dressed just like uh, take niggas to Africa guy, comes up and builds Chicago. Who's who's keeping the white man from getting into Chicago at the time while this niggas over there building? Shh. Who kicked the Spanish out of fucking Florida? Yet, yet, the, the span the, <laughs> who kicked them out of Florida? The whole time, something is being hidden from us. Some kind of force, some kind of army, some kind of civilization. It's just being held from us. Who kept all the Mongol Indians in the north, in the northern states? Hmm? Who kept them up in the Dakotas? Who kept those Indians up in those areas? Shh. They don't want to tell you what you was doing. Now, when some of you was fighting these people, others of our people wanted to assimilate. Wanted to be part of their commerce culture. Hold on, let me shut my son up real quick. Okay, so, I don't know. Every time, I, 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 this kid keeps going crazy. Every time I start recording, he keeps going crazy.
you know, so, uh, that's why I haven't been recording lately, and waiting until he goes to sleep and stuff, um, <laughs> you know, children, you try to have a conversation, and they keep getting louder and louder and louder, you know, how, how he knows I'm trying to have a conversation right now, I have no idea, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart this again and get this video going. So you, we're gonna learn about the Confederate gold, right? Is what they say, the Confederate. Now remember, there is a Confederacy. I don't care what anybody says. It does not have to do with fucking Mongol Indians. The Confederacy has to do with Psalms 83. Now, this the cities of Judah were here, especially in the West. The, the white man chronicled that Virginia was Jerusalem. Now, one thing has to be recognized. How many Jerusalems were there? Now, we have a map that Jerusalem was Italy. We have evidence that Azarath is is in the Russian territory. We have biblical writings that shows the new temple was constructed in or around Brazil, somewhere between there and Peru. We have writings from Columbus saying that he wants to attack Jerusalem. It's, it's I forgot the city, but it's close to Cusco, the center right, the navel, and that's South America as well. So, eventually, you're gonna have to ask how many Jerusalems were there? There couldn't just be one. All these people can't just be stamping Jerusalem on everything. Wherever the people are, they build a temple. If they keep going into diaspora, they're going to keep building temples. So, it's not like everybody's lying. Everybody's talking about different times in history to solidify their argument. I believe that's what's actually happening. All these people can't destroy Jerusalem down to a single stone, but it'd be located in all these places. It would have to be them chasing us around the world. Again, when you look at a uh, migration map, it shows you as Europe being the center and everything being to the outside. When you read their, their uh, ideals, it's to take all and to marginalize means to push to the outside. When you look at the, the, the migration map, United States and South America are to the fucking outside. Africa is to the outside. Everybody in history has read from right to left. Now we're at a time that people are reading from left to right. If you look at the map, Australia is to the right and moving to the left is the game of risk. These are all the lands that they've taken. So, and if you find out who's really in control, the only fucking brother of Japheth that ain't over here with his hand in your fucking pocket is the Iranian. When you look at who's the kings of the earth today, they're Arabs. It's all clear. If you're willing to see it, nobody's going to write it out. If you write it out, they'll fucking kill you. You can put your face on the screen and say anything you want. They just, yeah, they can always just say you're lying. Once you put it in print, then it's harder. Then it's harder. So the key to everything is right here. The Confederate gold lost. Who it's lost to and what they do with the gold. This is the key to everything. everything. This is an old video about general. See, every time you get to the general, it keeps stopping.
oxide in a wound, it'll stop. Now you see the, 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 the for me, the, the, the pointer arrow is flickering. That's how it's showing me I'm not in control of my own computer. But General Palmer, the man who founded Colorado Springs, and how he's the one who found the Confederate gold. Now, we're looking for Palmer, right? So when we go to Colorado Springs, they tell us that General William Jackson Palmer started Colorado Springs. Now, It's all right here. It's just about getting this video to play. Mm -hmm. Calvary pursuit of Jefferson Davis following the surrender of General Joseph E. Johnson. Davis was followed through North Carolina. South Carolina and Georgia, driven into the hands of General James H. H. Wilson. During the pursuit, Palmer's former command overtook and captured near Covington, Georgia, wagons carrying millions of dollars of, uh, you know, this. S P E C I E. I don't know if that's supposed to be spice or if that is a word specie. Bonds, security, notes, and other Confederate assets that had been kept in the Bank of Macon. So. <coughs> Do you understand what we just said? This general was chased from the north with three wagon full of gold, three wagon full of gold, spices, war bonds, all kinds of goody goody goodies to equity to start cities. He was chased through three states. I hey, you see, you're like. You're like, hey, let's watch YouTube and watch some high speed pursuits. Talk about some low speed pursuit, right? Three states. This is a horse and buggy war. Yeah! They're gaining on us! I mean, come on, man. Uh, how long does it take a horse and buggy to get through North Carolina? How many days? Then South Carolina and into Georgia and almost to the Bank of Macon, but couldn't make it to the Bank of Macon. Hmm? Yeah! Could you imagine that shit? Hey, I know they're hot on our trail, but we're going to have to pull over and rest these horses. How the f How do you do a chase? In old, old West, that you, you know, we're trying to shake them. We just can't. Well, their horses are gonna, they're gonna have to stop, or their horses will give out. Right? The horses gotta rest. So they're, you're here, they're there, and they like, oh, the horses are done. We gotta rest, and then everybody sleeps. Everybody wakes up, and you start the next day and keep on with the same shit. I'm a little confused, but 
How many people have ever heard three wagon full of gold being, being discovered? Oh boy, this is the juiciest shit. Do you understand how three wagons full of gold? Like that's that's a that's one, two, three flatbed trucks, right? Like like no, sorry, four by four, right? Like like Ford Ford F one fifty. That's three F one fifty full of Right, come on, that's a lot of fucking gold. Huh? That's enough to change the outcome of a war. That's enough to set Rome into poverty. Where was that found at? Macon, at the bank of Macon, Georgia. You got 13 colonies. How you got a fucking bank now? Huh? Oh, yeah. Not about that. Palmer was mustered out of the Union Army later that year. So he did find that gold. George, what did he do with it? To receive the honor. But for the scouting efforts, these trains for steam, we should be burning coal. It's a good idea. And of course, you know, you've got so less than six years later, Palmer to thank for it. Bell found in Colorado Springs. I mean, uh, everything in this Palmer was figured out by just a few people. Okay, so now all of a sudden, you got Colorado Springs being founded all the way on the other side of the country. It's kind of funny because, like, when you watch Hateful Eight. They're over there in Wyoming, above Colorado, right above, just just right above, in Red Rock, Wyoming, where there's already cities, right? Now, remember, when they started, before the Homestead Act, they made laws forcing all the Indians to go out west, right? West of them is force all those Indians, right? Force all those Negroes out west. So, again, if you lived in a city or your family was from a city and you watch somebody come in as a military and force all your people to go out west, and then you go out west and you start cities, and then here come those same people. coming and stealing and looting and killing. Now you got to pay their brothers and sisters to what? Identify who did it and to go hunt them down. So when I'm watching Hateful Eight and Quentin Tarantino just happens to pick, right? This is the guy that I always loves to put nigga and nigger in all his movies. He just happened to put Mimi as a property owner up in the fucking mountains. And when you look inside of Mimi's haberdashery, and you see all the shit Mimi got, like a piano and, you know, stove kettles and all that shit. Somebody had to build it for it to be up there. Horse and buggy culture coming in on the east, forcing everybody to the fucking west. Uh, uh, it, right? Black people were supposed to be enslaved at that time. How do you have black ownership? How do you have brown people owning shit? How do you have brown people out west if you're forcing all these Indians out west? It doesn't make sense unless they're calling you the Negro Indian. If they come here, they start calling you Indian. And they know the difference between you and the difference between their brothers. So when you start looking at all this stuff, it shows you that they're hiding you. Right? That's what's going on. They're hiding you in history. I watched this man have this video about the Inca. Excuse me, the Mayan and 
It was basically about the Mayans. And he brought up the aftex briefly. So then he pulls a picture of the Mayans up on the screen. Now it's not a recreation. It's an actual picture of how Mayans depicted themselves in their fucking red skin people that are called black today. And when he puts the picture up on the screen, he's, he makes a statement. I can't quite identify who these people are today. And I'm just like, that's the most racist fucking thing anybody could ever do. It truly is. Because it's obvious. It's a nigga. But they want to sit there and say, oh, I can't tell. See, so they're hiding you in history because of the actions that they did. If you go to war with somebody, in, in, in history, most people didn't, didn't steal your land and keep you there. Most of the time, they took you back to their land. What is being done here is unprecedented. These people are not guests. They never were. As a man, my opinion of them being here is a thief. This is why their God is a thief. Jesus. They come stealing and murdering set up a building and then say, you can't steal and murder. They steal and murder every day. They are the police. They police themselves. They let themselves go every day. Man pulls over, gives a woman a ride, rapes her, strangles her, she survives. They smack him on the wrist. This is what they do to their own. Over in Texas, college kid rapes a girl. They say, you can't go to school here no more. How much jail time he do? I thought rape was a violent act. I thought men and women were equal in this society. It's all a lie. See, the Liberty Bell is split. Liberty here is split. That is why they have a man dressed as a woman. Even the Bible says you can see the the damn tears running down this bitch's face, this man bitch's face. And what do you see? You see rusty tears. Of all things, for me personally, I've got to be honest, that's the most shocking fucking thing I've ever seen. Whoever spoke that prophecy a long time ago knew that there would be a fucking a copper bitch painted up standing in the fucking ocean. And he saw the face so close, he could see that how they sealed the seam on her fucking cheek under her eye makes it look like the bitch is streaming tears. When that Bible says that's the exact same land that Judah had control over prior to that metal bitch standing. It's done. It's a done deal. People can say anything they want, but you got to understand their agenda. Man come say, hey man, Bible's written by man. Well, how come shit keep coming true in the Bible? Hey man, the Bible is written by your oppressor. Well, why did the oppressor write his own goddamn destruction in that's moments away from my modern life?
See? Those people, they're forcing themselves to be godless. Forcing. That means that voice inside them is still talking to them, taunting them, driving them insane. And they'll keep, they'll keep chasing crumbs. Think about it. You can't leave with half this shit. You can't. When everything falls apart, ain't gonna be no food, ain't gonna be no clean water, ain't gonna be no gas to run no engine, ain't gonna be no power. You can't carry most of this shit. Think about it. Can't carry a hot tub. Can't carry a swimming pool. Can't carry an air conditioner. One person can only carry so many weapons. Plus their tent. Plus their personal belongings. Plus their change of clothes. Plus their med kit. It's coming. And those that are smart, they're going to understand that the city is just a trap. City's no good when there's not enough people for the city to be maintained. If there's not peace, you're not going to have running water. You're not going to have schools. Oh. You're not going to be washing your clothes. <sighs> Not gonna be dealing with any of that stuff. You just not. There's two different cultures: one that likes to bathe, and one that likes to wash their ass in the rain. Two different. Where they? How do they say that? Uh, Systems in the body. So, there'll be two different agendas. One will be survival, and one will be murder. That is the way the system has been set up. And the survivors will try to leave. And the murderers will try to hunt. And that's exactly what's depicted in prophecy. Those that want to know what's going to happen will read. It'll just be that simple. So look. There's a couple of videos by Mudflood where he just brings up the same thing. Confederate gold being stolen. Now, when you get into who stole the gold and who the, who the gold was stolen from, this is going to show you the division of the black and white. Now, we do not read stories written by people that lived in these moments. That will probably be, that's going to break everything. That is going to break everything. Call him his real name, but he's entitled to, and that's a Sambo. The whole institution of slavery has been blamed solely on, on, on Christian white folks in the South and the whole world act as though it didn't participate and the whole world did participate. You know, black folks and white folks in the South and the North, we've been family in lieu of slavery for a long time. For me, the victory didn't come with, with, with my sleep over there at Appomattox Courthouse for, the, for those folks. In the hearts and minds of us, that thing still was there, the love for the Southland of America. So the only way, basically, that we could do this thing is to dumb down the people 
and grab black folks and divide and separate them down in the South. How are you going to separate Confederate history and Southern history from black folks? But they don't talk about Levi Carnine, uh, Reverend Mike Lee, Hope Conyer, John Edgerton. They don't talk about these folks because, I mean, these are black heroes who, 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 who fought very bravely. Reverend Mike Lee said, <coughs> by the guard to honor General Robert E. Lee, he told his people after he educated himself with the mother. This is important. Believe it or not, <coughs> this is important. Southern history from black folks, but they don't talk about Levi Carnine, uh, Reverend Mike Lee, Hope Conyer. John Edgerton. They don't talk about these folks because, I mean, these are black heroes who 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 who, who fought very bravely. Reverend Mike Lee said, bodyguard to honor General Robert E. Lee. He told his people, after he educated himself with the money that General Lee had given him, keep your faith in God, buy you some land, get yourself educated, and beyond all else, put your faith and trust in the white man in the South, no other. No, I want to make a very clear statement right here. You've heard everybody say, everybody, they were killing the red man. Mongols ain't red. The only Mongols that are red did they fuck into us. We got the writings that they all did. So if they were killing red people. The Mongols still here, the white man still here. Only difference now is we call black. And we clearly ain't black. If my fucking hair is black, if this shirt is black, and you can see my face different than my hair and my shirt, then my skin ain't black. Now, think about that for a minute. That Bible say in one verse followed by the next verse, even my Nazarites were white, white like snow, but their bodies were red, and I put a famine on them to turn them black. Because he knew what was in the hearts and minds of Southern people. These folks talked about Nathan Bedford Price. Well, if it don't be for Nathan Bedford Price and that original Ku Klux Klan, I'm not talking about what happened after Nathan Bedford Price, many of us Southerners, red, yellow, black, and white, would be just like the dinosaur around here in the South of America, extinct. And people don't understand that. They just say Ku Klux Klan, and all of a sudden they gather these images of my flag and white men standing around beating and hanging and whipping black folks. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Gladys Stevens and his boys found out how successful that the Klan was at defending Southern folks, red, yellow, black, <coughs> and white. So what did they do? They started sending their boys down here and dressing up like the Klan and committed terror in the South. Whoa. So, wouldn't that be something? So, Remember how a con scheme works, right? You send in your cousin to distract, and then you come in and take, right? Now, 
does the Bible say I, 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 I sent an evil from the north? And then in the very next sentence can uh, continue to say, I sent the families of them. So there is no, from his perspective, he's trying to say one was good and one was bad. From my perspective, it's a fucking con game and you got ran on. Now you the only nigga in town saying the original KKK is good because they was helping everybody. That was the con. Then some others came in and took the hoods and did bad things. Bro, they are all here to do bad. Where, do you see any of them going back to fucking Siberia? Do you see any of them going to Russia? No. You see them going and murdering other fucking countries and us getting blamed. And then you see some white bitch on the screen saying, mm, now I have beachfront property. <laughs> and all those people from the fucking Marshall Islands are glowing. And when they and when they shit out babies, they're little puff balls. Giggly puffs. You saw the video where the woman sat there and said it's just a, a, a ball of flesh that you're gonna fucking tell me a story where they sit there and say we slaughtered millions millions of the Indians but you still see those motherfuckers today you gave them a reservation what what is a fucking reservation hi i would like dinner for 500,000 in the upper north and northwest regions of america can you hold a table for us yes sir my brother you're jafet i'm jafet so come on or so how the fuck are they murdered off what stories are you telling me they litter canada When this dude, when the 13, the guy from the 13 colonies gets bored, he just chokes him out. He don't even get, he don't even get respectable jail time for it. That's what he does to his own brother. We were just wrestling, bro. Judge, we were just wrestling, man. That's my brother. That's my brother's sister, right? Okay. judge right how much time did he get raping for raping that girl we're going to monitor you bad 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 right i don't even want to pull that shit up okay so this guy's brainwashed right fucking send in peter right to distract him and paul will come in and Put all the candy bars in his pocket. Now listen. This is this is the most beautiful. See, hey, we're just playing. He's got a what? Is, that's a gold fucking chain, right? Right. That's that's a diamond studded fucking collar, right? That's a noose, you dumbass. Listen, look, the dumbass has got a point. This is how they suckered the people in person. All wrong. Greta Stevens and his boys found out how successful that the Klan was at defending Southern folks, red, yellow, black, and white. So what did they do? They started sending their boys down here and dressing up like the Klan and committed terror in the South. See, now the video is going to start messing up, so we're going to reset the video. But that's the, this is the key to it all. They gather these images of my. Okay. Yeah, that's funny. He was saying you gather the images of my flag, but then it switched and showed his God. No. Clearly from reading the Bible, the Most High says, I don't change in Malachi. So having Malachi be the last book of the true testimony, and then it switches to the test. And then they test you with the heathen's God. Now, the heathen's God is actually... Bor or Burr or the son of Burry who 
is the father of Odin, who's the grandfather of Thor. And what do they do? They crucified men. That is what they do. So, of course, their God has to do with somebody who survived the punishment. What is the punishment for theft in the land of barbarians? Pin that motherfucker up on a piece of wood. They don't cut fucking hands off. They kill you for anything. It's a barbaric, nomadic... What? Nomad ain't gonna sit there and imprison you. He's gonna keep it moving. Hey, you double cross me. And he gonna keep it moving. See, I just watched some guy sit there and say, he wanna make a video say, oh, I know there's some people on YouTube that make these videos saying Japheth is evil and Japheth this and that. And he goes in and he starts reading these things about Japheth's culture. And he says, this man had a son. And the first thing he said, when the children were old enough to fucking handle him, they gave him a sword. When they put the sword in the child's hand, he says, this is your heritage. This is your birthright. What do you think he's going to do with a sword? Run around and tickle people's asses? Tickle fucking hamstrings? No. He's going to learn to use the sword to steal. Where are all those children today? They're our neighbors. So, of course, this guy didn't want to respect anything that's written, right? Oh, oh, he wanted to argue that Romans weren't Edom. That Romans were white people. Romans weren't black, right? Like, listen, man, just go to your own fucking museum. Why do they have black kings in the museum, nigga? Where are the white kings in the museums? Why do they only show you white kings in books? It's just fucking fantasy. It's a fucking fantasy. That's why Vincent always keep bringing up the song by Lord. And this bitch tell you in the song, I don't have the blood to rule over you. Let me pretend. Now, how is the average white person that has no contact with you ruling over you? You have to watch a movie to find that out. And the movie is on YouTube. Destination Planet Negro. And when the Negroes from 1930 come and see how we live today, They make a statement. We assimilated unto them and they did not assimilate unto us. They make another statement. They control your mind with this. They send signals to our head like this. Now, when you put it all together, it's clearly true. What do we use the phone for? We don't use the phone to fucking talk to each other that much anymore. No, but we listen to music and entertainment and media. It's just called media. In history, media is a fucking witch. So all we're doing is being just distracted by a witch. All our music teaches to bake fucking cocaine in the crack <laughs> and fucking other stupid shit, huh? Music today teach you how to rape, teach you how to be a creep, teach you how to be antisocial. We don't we don't want to call it what it truly is. We don't because then there's a distaste in our mouth when it comes on and we start bopping our head to it. Right. We we ain't got no music about drugs, we ain't got no music 
about about guns, but you still call a woman a bitch. So what is what is your listeners going to do? They're going to see a woman as a what? pair of tits, a fucking ass. They're going to look at the ass and say, I'd go for that. They're going to look at the face and say, oh, fuck. They're never going to look at the heart. That's brain training. You don't respect it like this. These fuckers came from a time when they didn't have all that shit, and they were still conned, right? K-H-A-N. Conned. And get yourself educated. And beyond all else, put your faith and trust in the white man in the South, no other, because he knew what was in the hearts and minds of Southern people. These folks talked about Nathan Bethel Price. If it don't be for Nathan Beckford Price and that original Ku Klux Klan, I'm not talking about what happened after Nathan Beckford Price, many of us Southerners, red, yellow, black, and white, would be just like the dinosaur around here in the South of America, extinct. And people don't understand that. They just say Ku Klux Klan, and all of a sudden they gather these images of my flag and white men standing around beating and hanging and whipping black folks. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Gladys Stevens and his boys found out how successful that the Klan was at defending the Southern folks, red, yellow, black, and white. So what did they do? They started sending their boys down here and dressing up like the Klan and committed terror in the South. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, Nathan Bethel Parris understood this thing. He told his men, men, let's just come home. Let's go home and forget about this thing. And I'll tell you something. From all the accounts of, of, of what you do find, there was not a single man who looked like me that wouldn't have given his life for Nathan Bedford Park. I'm gonna think about that shit. Hey, hey, now you go down and you play the hero, and then we're gonna come down and we're gonna play the fucking villain. We're gonna fucking kill them niggers. We're gonna take their land. Now think about this shit. How'd that shit play out? Hmm? All of a sudden, white man has land down there, and the black and the white are living side by side. N never did that black man say, what the fuck is this white man doing down here? Where the fuck did these people come from? How'd they get over here through war? Well... I don't think they should be allowed to stay. They had to kill to get on to our soil. None of these things ever popped into this motherfucker's head, right? Just all this jibber jash about, well, we was we we just started at one point. We was just neighbors, and a neighbor we was family like, right? Well, no, that's what you fucking had prior to that because your neighbor looked like you. Now you extended your fucking law because of what? The Spanish came first, Inquisition, right? So you accepted these new fucking neighbors. And you had no idea that they were up there drinking and making a plan saying, you go down and play the good guy, and I'll go down and play the bad guy. And when the when the bad people came down, remember, these motherfuckers was playing hero in the first place. Working for the white and the black. And when somebody came down and just posed at them, they just the good guys just said, well, guys, let's just go home. Really? Some bad guys come in sheets and it's just more glory for you. Right? Or did you do your job? You made it so that all those blacks say, I would lay down my life for that white man. And then when bad guys came down and started snuffing you out, that white man stepped aside and said, we did our job, it's time to go home. I call that a con. I call that a con. In fact, the problems that they probably helped out with prior to that were probably all from the same source anyway. Cause, solution. Cause, 
solution. Polish, Polaski, Tennessee. Polaski. That's the clan, right? Many bloodlines, but that's who starts it. Have your black folks from plantations all across the south end of America. Make all the implements of war. Stayed at home, all, provided all the food stuffs. Uh, uh, many went off the fights in the war. Gloriously! In the 77 cities that I marched through when I walked through Texas, there was not one town that somebody did not come with a black Confederate hero. Well, my great great grandmama had an education. Did you just hear that? Every one of the 77 towns that he marched to, there was at least one Confederate hero from that town. Now, again, why would all these black people be in the Confederate Army? Unless it was a goddamn black army. Again, the Confederation is in Psalms 83. If they argue that this flag is taken from Indians of a Confederation, uh, Moab, Edom, Ammon are all black. The Hagarines, the people of the Hague Convention, are the ones I'm saying is white. Because Ishmael's fucking named. That's Hagar's daughter, so it had to be somebody else. Go to Psalms 83. Look at all those people. Go to the Bible. Look at the name given in the Strong's Concordance and then chase that name. If you see Amorite, there's no goddamn Amorite. Amor is, is, is a language. It's a word in a language. A space more is something different, and they're not Canaanites. More, Moors is a group started by Moab once their kingdom fell. Other nations joining that is make is 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 a Freemason group. You've got to understand. You, you know, Moors are Hebrews. And an Israelite being a, a, a Moor is just he just rejected his bloodline and he wanted to be a worldly in a secret group. And the average Moor in Israelite, because you see they don't have the same facial hair. And they got those goddamn Popeye hocks. All right. Now, when you sit there and see these Bible groups sitting there telling you, Esau the white man. Nothing says that. The history of the real paintings Think about the video. Nigga, we was kings. They show you all the black paintings of them holding a ball, holding a globe earth with a cross going through it, which means a sword going through it. That's the that's the picture of them selling out. Those are all black kingdoms. Now controlled by white people. They solidified the image of them worshiping a different God. So the creator took his feather off them, took his wing away from them. Now, where are they? It was easy to trace their names. Easiest name to trace? It's going to have to be the Irish. Why do black people have nicknames? It ain't because it ain't they was owned by no damn Irish. The Irish was fucking poor. They came over and became the what? The police. The, mo the nomad didn't want to watch you. So they let the Irish in and the Irish formed their own gang called the police. And they were policing you for their master before the United States became the master. You, 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 we've just been lied to. That's what, why, why do you think 
Why do you think some of these movies win awards? Because they put it right in our fucking face. Using legal ease. So the average nigga just won't see what's going on. And he'll never watch that movie. Think about the movie Gangs of New York. It depicts most of what I said. Even when they're at the Great Manor. There's the Indian in the background having the feathers like America being the latest, greatest description. And he's red. Red, red, red. And he looks Negro. But his skin's red. And they act their scenes right in front of it. Just to show the audience. This is what those niggas look like before. Before this person fucked into us or that person. The Bible said the virgins were taken to what? The, the, the palaces of Judah once Judah was overthrown and they were raped. This isn't a period that they had condoms. This is a period where you're going to keep raping somebody until they're impregnated. And then they're no good anymore. You're going to move on to the next. Because unfortunately, that that group or that nationality buried their seed in us. And it doesn't say which. It mentions it like all. Like they turned it into a whorehouse. So to hear this man say this stuff, I'm not offended. I just see the con we've all been scammed i don't care if it was for two dollars care if it was five five dollars i don't care if it was for five hundred dollars we've all been scammed and this is just the story of how they scam the people in the south now again if the 13 colonies are full of white people and they haven't expanded yet. And then how are all these slaves in the South? 77 different cities he marched through, right? All with black heroes. That's a lot of cities to have slaves and, right? You gotta understand, this is just one big hot lie. They, they they make it sound like the white man extended all the way to Texas, if not further, and had black people on slaves, but but black people were living in their own towns between because he's talking about from Texas, buddy. Like you know, I, I just, you know, this is a this shit is a trip, dude. I'm gonna play this all again so you can hear for yourself. You can see I'm not making this shit up. Again, when you combine everything he's saying, it is really, it is a far fathom story from the reality that you're familiar with. All around. You know, I tell people often now, in hindsight, um, one of the things that I wish I would have been more cognizant cognizant of was the white privilege at UCLA that was sitting, you know, right next to me. For black people, I believe white privilege is something to, to leverage. Um, what is it, though? I, I don't see it anywhere. What is it? Call him his real name, what he's entitled to, and that's a Sambo. The whole institution of slavery has been blamed solely on, on, on Christian white folks in the South, and the whole world acted as though it didn't participate, and the whole world did participate. You know, black folks and white folks in the South and of America, we've been family in lieu of slavery uh, for a long time. For me, the victory didn't come with, with, with Marcy over there at Appomattox Courthouse for, the, for those folks. In the hearts and minds of us, that thing still was there, the love for the Southland of America. So the only way, basically, that we could do this thing is to dumb down the people and grab black folks and divide and separate them down in the South. How are you going to separate Confederate history and Southern history from black folks? But they don't talk about Levi Carnine, uh, Reverend Mike Lee, Hope Conyer, John Edgerton. They don't talk about these folks because I mean, these are black heroes who, 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 who fought very bravely. Reverend Mike Lee said, bodyguard to Arnold General Robert A. E. Lee, he told his people, after he educated himself with the money that General Lee had given him, keep your faith in God, 
Are you from land? Get yourself educated and beyond all else. Put your faith and trust in the white man in the South. No other. Because he knew what was in the hearts and the <coughs> of Southern people. These folks talked about Nathan Bethel Price. Robert Lee is a general, right? Why would white General Lee give money to a black man and say, go buy some fucking land? <laughs> you you got to understand what was just said there. He was a bodyguard to Lee, and Lee gave him money and said, go buy some land. Remember, Lee took part of the money that this guy, Palmer, founded founded fucking a city. How many cities did Lee found? Who'd they get the gold from? How can slaves be holding gold in Georgia? If it don't be for Nathan Bedford Price and that original Ku Klux Klan, I'm not talking about what happened after Nathan Bedford Price, many of us Southerners, red, yellow, black, and white, would be just like the dinosaur around here in the South of America, extinct. And people don't understand that. They just say Ku Klux Klan, and all of a sudden, they gather these images of Mark Lash and white men standing around beating and hanging and whipping black folks. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Gladys Stevens and his boys found out how successful that the Klan was at defending Southern folks, red, yellow, black, and white. So what did they do? They started sending their boys down here and dressing up like the Klan and committed terror in the South. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, Nathan Bethel Forrest understood this thing. He told his men, men, let's just come home. Let's go home and forget about this thing. <coughs> I'll tell you something. All now imagine this. <coughs> Imagine you're trying to kill all the black people to take their fucking land. So you get into a new uniform and you start protecting them so that word spreads out. If you see the ones in the white garment, they protect us. Now, here comes, what, the night shift? So the good old boys clock in, and, and, and the ones that run the scheme to look like heroes clock out. Come on, boys, let's just go home. How do you know they really clocked out if they just wore a hood like everybody else? What if they just publicly said, come on, boys, let's go home. And then they just rode into the forest, put their hoods back on, and came running out and killing. Now that you come out of hiding, now that you lower your defenses, when you see those white garments that would kind of resemble the clothing of the Levites. or the clothing of the high priests. All the accounts of, of, of what you do find, there was not a single man who looked like me that wouldn't have given his life for Nathan Bedford Park. <laughs> Yout! Now, imagine what I just said. It's a whole, it's a con game. We can't get them. They're too well protected. They're well armed. They go into hiding. Well, what if we dress like this, like it says in the Bible? And then we do positive things for them for a bit and build a trust with them. And then when they trust us, we'll come in and start slaughtering them. <laughs> 